Section 6.5, Assessing Normality. So this section is if we, um, is when we need to decide if we even should use the normal curve with real data. Rather than, in the other examples, we've kind of been told things are normal, but if we have real data, we need to decide if it's appropriate to use the normal curve. So how to decide if we should use the normal curve. So let's start off visually, and then we'll... Um, do the more technical version after. So I have a histogram, example one, I have a histogram on the right of a random sample of size 1912, so a nice big sample, and it's taken from an unknown population. Based on the histogram, what can you conclude about normality of the population? Explain. So basically, can we use the normal curve? So my first instinct is yes, right? It's pretty bell-shaped, and that's it. That is why. So because it's somewhat bell-shaped, Um, I'm going to say it's reasonable to use the normal curve. Um, I'm definitely not going to say for sure because we don't know anything for sure in statistics. We just know what's likely. Um, so because it's somewhat bell-shaped, normal seems possible or reasonable. Right, something to indicate that we're not 100% sure, but it seems likely. We don't know for a fact that it is normal, though. Statistics is really all about proving what's likely and not necessarily what's true. So it's most likely that it's normal, but it's not guaranteed. Um, example two, we have a histogram is given to the right. Um, this one is a random sample of sample size N73, um, and it's an unknown population. And then based on the histogram, what do you conclude about the normality of the population and explain? Same idea. If I look at this curve, it doesn't look normal at all. It looks like a right skewed curve. So because the curve looks right skewed, it's probably not normal. The population is probably not normal or not normal. Um, the negative case is actually easier to prove because it's so different. So we'll summarize this. So if we're using the histogram to assess normality, first we need to obviously create the histogram. Um, if the histogram is not even at least roughly bell-shaped, like example two, then you can confidently say, then you should conclude that the sample did not come from a normal population. It's so different, there's no way it's normal. If the histogram is at least roughly bell-shaped, then you can conclude that there's a reasonable possibility that the population is normal. And again, that has to do with the idea that we can't prove with absolute certainty, but we can prove that it's likely. A few things to worry about with histograms. If the sample size is small, the histogram might not have enough data for a clear shape to emerge, and sometimes we can be wrong. So with small samples, random variation has a large effect on the graph. We've seen this in the early chapters. And so it can just be really hard to tell the shape. And then for very, very small samples, um, the histogram almost never shows shape. So if you only have like 10 data values, it almost never presents a clear bell shape, and this can make us make the wrong conclusion. So this can cause us to conclude that a population is not normally distributed, even in the cases when it is, when it actually is normal. So be cautious of small sample sizes. All right, and the p-value method is a lot of words, um, but it won't be too much work. So the p-value method, it's another method that uses technology. Yes, it saves us a lot of trouble to compare our sample with an ideal normal sample of the same size that is taken from the standard normal distribution that we just covered. So what it does is it compares our data to a perfect normal curve. Our sample will probably never look exactly like an ideal sample from a normal distribution, just like that first graph. 
It was pretty bell-shaped, but it wasn't perfect. So the p-value is measuring this. So when we see differences between our data and normal data, there's two conclusions. It's either very different. Our sample data is very different from normal. So it's so different, it did not come from a normal population. And that's why it doesn't look like one, right? That's why we see differences, because it's not normal. Or if it's only a little bit different, like example one, then maybe our data really did come from a normal population. It's just not quite the same due to random variation. So example two would be an example of, it's so different, it's definitely not normal. Example one, right, was pretty close to normal, but not normal normal, right? Just a little off from random variation. And so the p-value is going to measure um, if our sample really came from a normal population, the p-value is the probability that we would have seen differences at least this big um, as we observed in our data compared to the ideal normal. So what's the probability would be this different? Uh, so small p-values means it's probably not normal because it's very unlikely to see these differences. So that's the big takeaway here. Unlikely to be normal. And that's because it would be unlikely to just randomly have these differences. So I know it's a lot of words, but we're going to do examples and you're going to realize they go by really fast. So. Let's summarize this, the procedure for using p-value. This is actually the more structured version than just looking at a graph. Um, so we just kind of have a kind of an arbitrary cutoff, but the cutoff is going to be 5%. So if the p-value is less than or equal to 0.05 for 5%, that's our cutoff. That is a small enough p-value to conclude that the sample did not come from a normal population. Our data is way too different from an ideal normal sample for differences to just be, re uh, to be, to reasonably just be random variation. So it's so unlikely, right? So small b p-value, so unlikely to be normal. So small p-values are probably not normal. Um, and then the opposite is when it's greater than 0.05 is when we say maybe it could be normal still. So if the p-value is greater than 0.05, again for 5%, then conclude that there is a reasonable possibility that the sample was taken from a normal population. Our data looks enough like an ideal normal sample for the differences that the differences could reasonably just be random variation. So it still doesn't tell us that it's normal for sure. It just tells us that it's possible. So the p-value, I've said this multiple times now, cannot prove that our sample was taken from a normally distributed population. It just, again, when your p-value is larger than 05, it just means there is a reasonable possibility. I'm saying it over and over because it's an important thing, important information. And that's, again, because statistics is just proving what's likely, not what is true. So we'll do two quick examples and be on our way. So example three, we have a histogram and p-value. Um, I got the p-value from StatCrunch, so you'll learn how to do that when we do the tech project. Um, they're given below to help assess normality of a random sample of size 67, which is big enough um, taken from an unknown population. Based on the p-value, what do you think about normality? So I'm not going to use the graph anymore. The graph does look a little bell-shaped to me, not so great, but a little bit. But the p-value is like the formal way of checking. So p-value is done on technology, computers. Um, I get a p-value of 0.9535. Is that bigger than my cutoff? Yeah, it definitely could be normal. This number there's like a 95% chance we would see these differences if we had a normal curve. So yeah, we conclude that there is a reasonable possibility the 
population could be normal. Could be, right? Again, we don't know for sure, but it seems pretty likely. So we're only proving what's likely. That's all statistics is. Just like election polls, right? Election polls are proving this person will likely win, but do they know that for a fact? Not yet. So only reasonable possibility. And then example four. I mean, looking at the graph, what do we think? This is so right skewed. This is not normal, but let's see what the p-value says. So we have a histogram and p-value again um, to represent the base annual salaries of a random sample of 73 Major League Baseball players in 2014. And then based on the histogram, no, based on the p-value, because we already did histogram, let's do p-value. What do you conclude about the normality of the population? So histogram, yeah, it's definitely um, not normal, but we want to try the p-value method now. So when the p-value is really small, it just spits out 0 0.0001. So that's really, really, really small. Basically saying, if I had a normal distribution, it is so unlikely that it would look like this. So because this is so small, it's basically zero. The population is not normal. It's too different. So um, practice this in homework and a little bit in the tech project.